Hi everyone, it's Kelly from Kelly's Bee Boutique. So I've been making and teaching how to make jewelry for a very long time now. And one of the things that I hear all the time is, you make it look so easy. Well, that's because I think it is. So I'm gonna take some simple parts and some simple techniques, and I'm gonna teach you how to make your very own jewelry. So if you wanna see what I'm making today, come and join me. Okay, so let's get started with all the parts here. So the first thing I've got is some 6 aught Mayuki seed beads, and these are in um, the Picasso Canary Yellow. And I'll make sure to put a link to everything below. Um, I also have some size 8 Mayuki seed beads, and I don't know what the color of these are, but they're like a, they're also the Picasso, and I think they're like the Picasso 10. They're the 94517, if you're wondering what the number is. I also have some of the crystal cup chain, sometimes they call it chaton chain, whatever you want to call it. Um, this is the three millimeter one, and this is approximately two inches less than my wrist size that I'm going to use. So this one is about five inches or so. I also have some flat leather, um, and you're going to use your wrist measurement on that. So whatever your wrist measurement is, um, you can always cut back a little bit, but it's harder to add on to it. Uh, I also have some iris wax linen and I have about three meters and in the US that's the same almost as three yards so just take three yards and add a few inches and then you'll have the same measurement. I'm going to be using a little bit of GS Hypo glue. I have some jump rings and I have a clasp somewhere. I don't know I guess it's hiding. I did bring one over here but I'll find it for later and I also am going to be using some uh, three millimeter double-sided tape. I get this from a special company, but you can get uh, double-sided tape at the uh, dollar store or you might even be able to get it at Michael's. Um, if it comes wider, you can just uh, take a pair of scissors and, and cut it. You only just need a little bit of it and I'll show you how in a second. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off a piece of tape the same length as my little piece of crystal chain here. So that's about that long. Now the only reason that we're using this is it just helps secure the chain down. So when we're trying to create this bracelet, it makes it just a little bit easier. You're not gonna see it at all. Um, so it just helps kind of hold it in there. So what I wanna do is find the center and I kind of get it started. This stuff's super sticky. This one comes from Korea. It's a specialized one that was used in, um, what do you call that? Uh, scrapbooking and we used to have a lovely scrapbooking store here and this lady sells this stuff so um, it's really great product so now what i've got to try to do is get that off so you just need to sort of burnish the ends down a little bit and then i'm going to peel off the backing there we go let's just take off the backing and then i'm going to take my chain and i'm going to run it down the middle so I want to try to center both of these. So I've got the tape centered in the center of the leather, and then I want to try and do the same with the chain. So I kind of get it started, and then you can kind of, you know, just make sure it's all where you want it to be. And this tape is pretty sticky, but that's kind of what we want. All right, so, so now you can see when we're trying to do our uh, macrame around it, it's not going to fall off because I have done it without and I can do it, but um, yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> it's kind of futzy. So I actually prefer doing it this way and you won't even see that after. Okay, so let's go on to the next step. Okay, so the first thing I've done is I've taken my Irish wax linen and I folded it in half and found the midway point. So now I'm gonna take that and place it underneath my leather. So I'm going to be doing some macrame. So the way that I do it is I use P's and Q's. So I'm going to take my right hand side and lay it around over top of the leather like that. And then I'm going to take the tail on the left hand side and go over top of that tail. You always want to go over top. So you see it sort of looks like a P. Now I need to take this tail and bring it up through this loop. So I just sort of pick this up, push that little tail up through that hole there and then pull. So now I'm going to, it kind of will pop off at first because there's, you know, we don't have a lot of room there. But not to worry, just tighten it up and give it a pull. 
So now you can see that there's like a little bump here. That bump not only serves as a, um, you know, your, your first knot, but it will also show you what side that you're going to start on. Often people will say, well, what if I put this down and I have to come back? How do I know which side to start on? You're always going to start the second half of your square knot um, with where your loop is or your little bump there. So now I know that I'm going to be starting on my other side. So I'm going to be doing uh, what I like to call a cue. So I'm doing I'm going like that, it sort of looks like a cue. Bring that tail over top, and then it goes up in through that hole. So bring it up through the hole. And you see I'm always kind of holding on to the middle. It sort of helps stabilize things a little bit. So you want to pull this up, and then tighten it. And there we go, we have one full square knot. So now I'm just gonna make one more. I'm gonna go over top and make my P bring that tail over top and then I have to go up inside the loop of the P. So underneath there and up through the loop. And then bring this up. And it looks like it might be kind of hard to do because but it's mo mostly just because I'm trying to keep it in the frame of the camera here. So there we go and there's one half. Now I'm going to do my Q. So I go over top, make sure I go over top of that tail and then bring that up inside the loop there. And pull that out and then I can tighten it up. I'm just gonna bring that up there. And I do it kind of slowly because I don't want this to knot anywhere other than right on the leather. So now you can see we've got a good strong structure that's gonna start the, the basis of this bracelet. So that looks nice and neat and that's exactly what we want. So now I'm gonna show you how to start the next part. All right, so now I've laid out my seed beads. So I'm gonna take one six and then one eight and place them on the right hand side of my Irish wax linen. And this is plenty thin enough that'll go up inside there. And I'm gonna create the first side of my square knot. So I'm going to make my P, bring that over top, and come up through the hole. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place this in between those first pieces of crystal. And I want to make sure that the size 6 goes beside the leather. So I'm going to push that up there. And then I'm gonna make sure that this eight goes underneath there. So you'll see when I tighten it up, that it sort of pushes that up there. There we go. Because I want this on the side of the leather and I want this beside the crystal. And then I'm gonna repeat on the other side. So I'll grab my size six seed bead and then my size eight. And my Yuki seed beads are pretty um, uniform in size, but you might find the odd one that doesn't want to cooperate. So then I just put it aside and use something else. Okay, so now I want to create the other side. So I'm going to place that in between those, the same one that I did the first one on. And then I'm going to bring this over top. Always make sure to go over top. If you don't, that's not going to create your pro uh, proper square knot. So bring that up inside the loop. and then you're gonna tighten that up. So that one just kind of nicely went in there. Quite often you have to maneuver the eight so that it goes up next to the chain. It doesn't always wanna go there. So now you can see how we're gonna have our two large ones on the outside and two small ones up there. And I really like the way that this kind of balances out. And you don't actually end up seeing the double-sided tape that we used either by doing that. So now I'm going to repeat many times. Okay, so now I'm gonna put another six and an eight on, and now I'm gonna go down to the next little row there in between those two crystals. So I'm gonna make my P, I'm gonna go over top of that tail, and then underneath and up through that hole there. So I'll show you this a couple times. I'm pretty sure you'll catch on fast. It's pretty easy to do. I know it gets hard because my fingers are always in the way. I try to move them, so I'll get that. So basically what I like to do is push the six that way and then pull the eight that way. And then they just kind of seat the way they're supposed to. And I'm pulling fairly tight. I don't want to pull so tight that I 
um, make a divot in the side of this leather. I don't think that looks very nice, but I am pulling nice and tight. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the other side. So I've got my size six on there and I'm gonna put my size eight on. And if that starts to unravel a little bit on the end, you can just um, kind of roll it between your fingers, which is kind of nice. So now I'm gonna take that and seat it in between the one that I was already in. Each one's gonna go in there twice. Now I'm gonna go over and then up through the hole. So you see how I just kind of put, push those, um, I push this Irish wax linen in between those two seed beads and then that really helps sort of seat them properly there. Is that one you want to be under? And then just make sure that's up in the hole before you pull it tight. It's hard to do all these and talk and keep it on camera. <laughs> all right, there we go, that worked. So see how pretty that's starting to look? So I'll do one more and show you and then um, I will carry on off camera so that I can get this done and I'll show you how I finish off this bracelet. So I'll do one complete one. So I'll put on my six and then my eight. These are so not my colors, are they? I, I always use the blues and the browns. So I went for something a little different today. Breaking out of my mold. Okay, so I'm gonna go across that next row there Make sure you go over top and then up through the hole. So I'm taking this tail here and go up through that hole. And I don't worry about it seating properly until I'm about ready to close it all up. So once I get to this point, then I will push it all up in the right place. So pull that up into that next hole there. Make sure the eight's next to the crystal and the six is on the outside and then give it a tug. So it's pretty, pretty simple. And I'll show you the other side. So I've got my six and my eight. And pull it all the way up, you'll find it's easier. Seat that in between, go over top, pull it up through the hole. Just gotta make sure you're pulling the right one there. <laughs> A lot of a lot of Irish wax linen here, but it's always better to have more than not enough because it's, this one would be impossible to add on. So make sure those are seated and then give it a tug. So now you can see how that's shaping up. So I'm gonna just continue all the way down here and then I'll come back and show you how I finish up this bracelet, okay? All right, I'm about halfway down and um, I am loving this color combination. It's just really nice and subtle, maybe hard to see against the yellow mat there, but I'm loving how this looks on this chocolate brown leather. So I'm gonna continue on and then I'll come back in a bit. All right, so I am on my last one here. So I'm gonna just show you one more time how to do this. So I'll put on my six and my eight. And by now you'll notice that your fingers are a little sticky, but <laughs> you can wash that off easy enough. All right, so I'm gonna place that in between, bring my tail over, up through the hole, and then just make sure that's seated in between there. And then what I like to do is make sure that that's sort of split and that will automatically make that pop in the right position. And another tip is to make sure you give it a good tug. You don't want it to be loose at all. It just doesn't have the same finish if it's loose. So now I'll do the other side. And this is my final one. So even with all the beginning where I had to, you guys don't see what happens off, off camera, you know, like I make mistakes and I have to start again and <laughs> all those things. I'm at about 45 minutes right now. So it does take a little bit of time to make this one. It's not a real fast one. But I think this is probably going to be, you know, really about realistically, maybe half an hour. Okay, so make that side. Pull that up. Of course, I made that loop a little small. There we go. So and you can see I do have some Irish wax linen left over. But again, I always like to work with a little more than a little less because I find it just a little bit easier to not run out of things. Okay, split that and then get those where I want and then give it a nice little tug. So now I started with two square knots at the beginning, so I'm going to end with two square knots. So make my P, bring that tail over, 
go up through the hole. And if you know a different method of making square knots, then you just carry on and do whatever you um, like to do. Um, this is just the way that I learned how to do them. So I found for me, P's and Q's work well. Some people do them, um, they start underneath somehow, but I haven't been able to figure that one out. So this is the way that I get a nice consistent square knot. And just going to do my final one here. And then do the, <laughs> very sticky. That's what we want though, we want this to grip. That's why I like using it because it does grip nicely. Okay, and then tie that up. So hopefully I was on camera. I was not even watching what I was doing there. Okay, <laughs> I've noticed a few of my videos lately have been off, off of camera a little bit, so I have to make sure that I'm watching that a bit more carefully. Okay, so loving how that looks. Look how beautiful that is when you bend it and that'll be what's on top of your wrist. So pretty. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it over and now I'm gonna tie a surgeon's knot. So a surgeon's knot is just like you're tying your shoes. So you just go through once and then you bring it back through again. And then we're gonna give that a nice. Now the one thing about surgeon's knots is sometimes they want to tie up here versus down below. So I make sure I sort of stick my finger in there, get it where I want it and then start pulling evenly on both sides and give that a nice tight. I don't wanna pull so tight that I mar the leather though so and then we're going to repeat that again okay so just I'm going to turn that around and do it the opposite direction so go through once and then just bring it back through again and if there's any surgeons watching in that's not right well I don't know that's just what I was told <laughs> you know I actually wanted to be a doctor when I was young until I had to dissect the fish in school that was the end of that. I'm like, no, I think I'm a more artistic person. Okay, and that one I'm gonna sort of pull this way because I want that knot to be right in the center. Okay, so now, again, I always need scissors and don't bring them, so I'm just gonna use my cutters. So I'll trim that off. And then I'll trim off the other side. And then this is where we're gonna use a little bit of the GS Hypo glue just right on this little knot here. I won't go too crazy while I'm on camera because I don't want it to, um, you know, get all over the place while I'm filming. So then I would just let that set up a little bit, but I think I'm probably pretty good. All right, so let's finish off the bracelet. So I'm gonna take my little ribbon end and I'm going to line it up on top. And these are nice and soft, so you can sort of pre-form it a little bit. Then I'm gonna take my pliers and give that a little scrunch down and turn it over and just kind of scrunch it all in and those little teeth will sink right inside there so you don't even need any glue i just kind of go all over it you just want to make sure that you don't scrunch that part there because that um, will you know it'll break off so i'm going to repeat on the other side and just make sure that it's nice and straight before you start so i just line it up and then give it some pretty good scrunches So now I'm going to add my toggle. So, so open up your jump ring. Now these are really heavy jump rings, so I like to put my bent chinos on one side and bend away like that. So I'm going to add the round side with just one of my jump rings. If you've watched my videos before, you've seen how I like to add my tail with three jump rings. It makes it a lot easier to do up. So I'm going to put on one here and then I'm going to add one of the uh, other ones. I'll just kind of tighten that one up a little bit. doesn't look like it was fully closed. I always like to use a heavy gauge jump ring that's very small and that stops it from opening up on you. Quite often people use like big loose jump rings and that's how your jewelry will fail on you. All right, now I'm going to add my bar end and do that up nice and tight. Okay, so there's our completed bracelet. So now you can see when I go to do it up, it's a whole lot easier to do up because I've got those three jump rings.
There you go. I love this bracelet. I know I say I love everything I make. That does. <laughs> does that sound bad? <laughs> I don't know. I just think this one's really fun. I came up with this one years ago. It was a super popular class for a long time. I love the way it looks. So pretty. So in the comments below, make sure you tell me what color combination you think you're going to use because I think you guys are going to love this one. Okay, so one of the things I'm going to be using today is this beadboard. If you don't have one of these, you could use the lid of a shoebox, or if you have a macrame board, you just need some way to be able to secure this. You could also tape it down. It's just harder for me to show you if it's taped down, but if that's the only thing that you can do, go ahead and just use the, the tape. But for me, I'm going to be using this little beadboard, and I also have one of these little clips. I have two pieces of two millimeter leather, and these are about 65 inches long. And I'm using contrasting colors because I really like the way that the colors contrast. It makes for a little more interesting uh, bracelet. And also it makes it easier to figure out where you're going on these knots. I also am using one of these little distressed buttons. And of course we're gonna be adding some barrel knots so I have to have a barrel knot tube. And then I'm using these little distressed oval beads from Tierra Cast, which go so nicely with this button and we're gonna be using some GS Hypo cement. And pretty much the only tools we're gonna to need are a pair of scissors, and of course I didn't bring mine, so I have just a pair of cutters. And that's all we're gonna to need today. So let's get started. So the first thing you have to do is decide how you want to display these leathers. And you know, honestly, it doesn't really matter. Uh, they're both gonna show, but if you wanna have your sort of the color, let's say I like this color the most, the blue, and I wanna have it on the outside part like this, I wanna make sure that that's the one that I run through the button. So let's do that and then I'll show you how it all works and it'll make a little more sense. So I'm just gonna find the center by putting the two ends together and I'm gonna take my button. Now these buttons do have two sides in that it's got a little bit of a concave look and I like to have this on the outside. So that's the way that I'm gonna use my button. So I just put one in each side and being careful not to rub too much on the leather because you don't want to strip the leather against metal is I'm going to run that down until it comes to the center. Now I'm going to take that and I'm going to just flip one of these sides up on my little uh, bullnose clip and I'm going to just pop that through the end. And now I'm going to just attach it. And all this does is just give me a place to make it a little bit um, more sturdy for, basically it's really for you guys so that you can see uh, what I'm doing. So you could, you could tape this down, I suppose, but I really find this way works nicely. So now I'm gonna take my other piece of leather and I'm going to find the center. Now this isn't it, like a traditional macrame in that we don't have to have anything secured down like this end doesn't have to be stuck inside because we need our ends loose. So I just wanna find the center of this and now I'm going to run it behind this piece here. So I just kinda of get it about where I want it. So then I'm gonna pull the sides out so that I can show you clearly what I'm about to do. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to create um, a square knot. All right, so the one on the right, I'm gonna take and I'm gonna go over top of both of those pieces of leather and that creates kind of what looks like the start of a P. Now this one that's up here, it has to go over top of that. So now we have that coming over top. Now that one that I just pulled over top needs to go underneath here and up through this hole. So I just kind of take it and pull it like that. Now you can see I'm still holding up here because I don't want those leathers to uh, get offside too much. Like I wanna have them still in the center. So I'm just kind of working back and forth until I get that right where I want it. So now I wanna leave only about maybe a half an inch to a quarter of an inch, somewhere right about there. I don't wanna have it jammed right up next to the button because then I won't be able to get it done up, but I don't want it to be um, too far down either. So the first one's always the hardest, so just take a minute to get it kinda pulled where you want, and now I'll be able to show you a whole lot easier. So that's the first half of a square knot. So now I'm gonna take the other side and I'm gonna do sort of a reverse P or a Q, and then I'm gonna pull that over top, and then that's gonna go up through the hole like that. And we're just gonna tighten that up. Now this is fairly skookum leather in that it's uh, two skookum. Does that make me sound really old? <laughs> um, 
it's it's pretty heavy duty but you want always want to be careful when you're pulling on leather that you don't pull it so tight that it breaks all right so i'm just getting those all nicely put in there so there's our first little bits of leather okay so now we're going to create the next section and that is by making lark head knots so i'm going to take my other colored leather and that's why this is easier if you have two different colors of leather it helps keep it all straight so i'm going to take the one on the left here and i'm going to go over top of my left leather just creating a loop like that and i'm just going to bring it through like that and pull it up super simple now i need to repeat that but in order for this to work as a lark's head knot i have to create it a little differently in that instead of going over top for the second one you go underneath so that's the only difference is you go underneath and pull that through. And when I pull it tight, you can see now that that made a perfect little lark's head knot. So I'm gonna get those out of the way and I'm gonna repeat on the opposite side. So I'm gonna go over top of this leather and pull it through. And for me personally, I always find the right one a little harder. I'm not sure why, but I always find it a little bit more awkward. And now for the second part of it, I'm gonna go underneath and then pull that through. So this one is pretty simple to do, but the uh, effects are quite, quite lovely. So you just wanna make sure that these are nice and snug. And now I'm gonna take my second color and pull it down through the middle and pull my other ones to the right. Now we've got our first section of square knots and we've got our section of lark's head knots. So now I'm gonna create another section of square knots. So I'm gonna make my P go over top, and then up through that one and tighten that up. And now when I tighten that up, you can see it all wants to buckle. So what I do is I pull this down and then I'm going to realign these ones so that they're on the sides because they tend to start up here. So I wanna pull them down so they're on the side of that knot. And then I pull it tight and then I give this one more little tug. And you can see when I'm pulling on this whole thing, I'm holding on to it and tugging so that it doesn't all go out of whack. Because if I just pull this, that's all gonna move around. So hold on to it and give it a little tug. And now you can see it's created a little section there. That's the first half of our square knot. So now I need to do the other side. So go over top on the left side, over there and up through the hole. and tighten that up. So now you can see we've got a completed section here. We've got a square knot, two lark's head knots, and a square knot. So now we're gonna take one of our little distressed ovals and we're gonna run that through. And now I'm gonna create another uh, square knot. So over top, always bring that over that one that you've just brought over the leather. This has to go over top and then up through the hole. Now, when you do this one, you don't wanna do it so tight that you um, tip this. So if I pull it really tight, what happens is that little um, oval that I use tends to wanna to buckle. So I pull back just ever so slightly on it so that it's encasing it, but it's not tipping that over at all. Now I'm gonna do the second half. So go over top and over that tail and up through the hole. And this second knot is the one that you wanna tighten up to make sure that that's really nice and secure. So that just adds a little bit of a decorative feature. Now I did say at the beginning of this video that I thought this was the perfect unisex bracelet because all leather bracelets are great for um, both sexes, I think. Now, if um, a man's looking at this and he's going, well, that's kind of nice, but maybe that adds too much of a feminine touch, just leave it out. Just do these two sections without the bead in there and I think it would be a fabulous looking men's bracelet, so. All right, so now we're gonna create another one of these sections here. So we're gonna go over on the left, over top, and run it through that hole, and bring that up, and tighten that up. And then the second one goes underneath, and through the hole, and then tighten that up. And then pull those out of the way so that you know which ones you're working with. So on the right-hand side, it goes over top of that leather, and then through the hole, And then this one goes underneath and then through the hole. And you just wanna tighten those up. Now I bring those middle ones down 
and I'm going to start creating my square knots again. So you go with the right one over top, then bring that one over top of that tail and up through the hole. And then now you're going to bring this right one down and bring the left one down and you're going to tighten them up and just kind of tighten. It's sort of like I'm tightening everything up, just kind of doing a little bit at a time, making sure it's where I want it to be. And there we go. That's exactly what I want. And now I'm going to do the left side. So put that over, over that tail and up through the hole. Okay, so now there's our first square knot. And now we're going to put on our little distressed oval. And we're gonna create the first half of our square knot. So I'm gonna go over top of that, bring this one over top of that tail, and that goes up through the hole. And again, you don't wanna tighten this one up so much that it uh, alters the shape of this whole thing. So I wanna pull that around, but I'm not tightening it up super tight. I'm gonna uh, make it a little tighter on the second half. So bring that over, over top of the tail, and bring that up through that hole. And now this one is the one that I tighten up nice and snug. And you can always pull your leathers around if you're something's sticking out and you're not really you know, digging it there, you can kind of move it around. Okay, so I'll show you one more of this um, little lark's head knot. So bring these off, always make sure they're separated. So the one on the left, I'm gonna go over top and bring it through that hole, pull it up. In the second half, I go underneath and then, so it goes underneath and then it comes over top and down through the hole. And you'll know right away if you've done it wrong. Sometimes when I'm not paying attention, I look and go, well, that doesn't look like a lark's head knot. So a lark's head knot should look just like that where it comes through and then comes back out. You can see they're sort of mirrored images of each other, but it's got this loop over top there. So I'm gonna go over top of that tail and then bring it up through that hole. Tighten it up. And on the second half, I go underneath and then bring it through that hole. And now I'm going to do my macrame. Not my macrame, that's what we're doing this whole thing. <laughs> I'm gonna do my square knot. <laughs> Sometimes trying to teach and do is <laughs> not always the easiest thing. I'm trying to get my brain um, two steps ahead to know what I have to do here. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay, so again, kind of pull it tight. You want to pull these down on the sides. Always make sure to pull them down. Otherwise, it just doesn't look right. And stick your fingers right on top of there and give it a good little snug there. All right, so we've done our first half. And... You can see how I do this. I literally just go like this. I don't make a big production out of it. I do it right in my fingers, so it goes pretty fast once you can figure it out. And then we're just gonna carry on. So that's how we get the first part of our bracelet. And I'm loving this color combination. So I'm gonna show you how to finish this, this one off. Now to get this off, what we're gonna do is we're gonna undo this clip, and it can be a little awkward to pull out. So what I do is I open this up just kind of take that little bullnose clip right out of there, and then you can slip that out. So now I have one off camera here that I completed last night, and now I'm going to run that up through there and then put it back in the clip and do it back up. Okay, so let's finish this off. So one of the things you have to think about is sizing. So. This one here has um, seven of these beads in the middle, and this will make about a six and three quarter inch bracelet. Mine, I have eight of these beads, and that makes about a seven and three quarter inch bracelet. Where you're gonna have from the end to the end here, so this, so this is our last set of square knots, and then we're gonna be adding a succession of barrel knots, and I'll explain why. From there into here is about an inch and a half. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap it around your wrist, and once you have about an inch and a half there, then you know you've got enough um, in length. 
Now let's say that you've got um, too much where you're gonna have to pull back and maybe add some on. So one of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna add barrel knots here to uh, finish off the leathers and bring them together. So if you need to add some length, this is a really good place to do it. Instead of doing two barrel knots here, you could do four. You could do four, four, and four, and that would probably bring it down another inch. So you're gonna to have to play around with, can't tell you exactly how it's gonna end up in sizing because also it depends on how tight you make your weaves here too. So there's some variables in this, but you wanna make sure that you've left yourself a good inch to inch and a half there. Um, this one is a little bit big for me, but I actually like my bracelets a little larger and this one will probably stretch a little bit too when it's worn. So if it doesn't fit you and you're going, oh gosh, I wish it was just a little bit tighter, pull on it a little bit and it, I mean, obviously you don't wanna to pull too much, but pull on a little bit and it will give it a little bit of extra uh, length. So I'm gonna show you how to finish that off. So what I'm gonna need is my barrel knot tube. So, and I should mention, when um, if you take this off and then you decide you have to put it back on and make some more knots, you want to make sure you put it on the right way. So, if you look at it, this is the upside down part. And you can see how this looks completely different than if I turn it this way. I don't see those little bumps. So, you want to make sure that if you have to put it back in to do anything on it, you've got it the right direction. So, you should always want to see these bumps that are going down the middle. If you can see if you're doing it this way, they, those bumps aren't in there. So always make sure that's on there correctly. Okay, so now I want to finish this off. So I need to get these two leathers together so that they're sort of married up. Otherwise, I've got these kind of floating out there. So I'm gonna create some barrel knots. So I'm gonna take my tube and I'm gonna place it in between my two exterior ones. And I'm gonna take the most outer one there and I'm gonna wrap it around once and just twice. Normally I do three barrel knots, but on this one I'm gonna do twice. And I'm gonna put it through the back end and pull that out. And then I'm going to push that up so that it's right next to that last square knot that we did. And I wanna have that pretty tight in there. Nice and tight, because I don't want that to come out at all. Okay, so that's now together. Now I'm gonna turn it over and repeat on the other side. So take my tube, place it in between, wrap that around once, twice. Now you will have a lot more leather than I've got here because this is actually the second time I've done this today because I filmed the entire thing, cut all my leather, and then realized my camera wasn't on. So <laughs> I had to quickly come up with another uh, um, way of doing this. So I kind of just had to uh, fudge it a little bit. So. <laughs> You know, nothing's ever easy. I um, I finally carved out a day where I'm filming a whole pile of videos and then, you know, things just don't go right. So, <laughs> oh, well, that's the life. Okay, so now I've got my barrel knots on either side. And what that does is it helps a way uh, for these exterior ones that are now in the middle there. Um, it gives them a place to be sort of uh, encompassed. Now, again, if you're trying to add some length, this is a perfect place to do it. So instead of doing two barrel knots, maybe do four. It, you know, you can sort of play around with it to create that little bit of extra length. So now we're going to be brave and hope that I've done this correctly and I'm going to trim this off. So I'm gonna take my cutters and I'm gonna trim the exterior ones. So you never wanna trim the interior ones, just the exterior ones. And then I'm gonna make some more barrel knots. So now I'm gonna take my tube and I'm going to wrap around once, twice. And again, if you need to add extra length, do two, three, four, whatever you wanna do. Because barrel knots are the, a good place to add the length on at the end here. Okay, and I'm just going to bring that together. So what this did was it created a way of encompassing this exterior leather and then bringing this together like that. So I wanna make sure that's nice and snug. Okay, so now we're gonna create our buttonhole. So now I wanna lay my button here and I know that I need my buttonhole to be about that wide. So I'm just gonna sort of mentally mark that and I'm going to place my barrel knot tube in between and I'm gonna create my two wrap ending there. So I'll go around once, twice, and then go through the end and bring that through. And what I do is I kind of get it where I need it and I don't tighten it up too much. I just usually then make sure 
that I can get my button in there nice and easily and yeah, it goes through perfectly fine. So then what I do is I take my thumb and I place it right on the other side so that that barrel does not move or the barrel knot doesn't move because if you pull on it, it will definitely move. So now I'm tightening up with the one that, like there's one that makes it move and there's one that makes it tight. So you wanna make sure that you're pulling on the one that makes it nice and nice and tight. And now I'm gonna come in and I'm going to trim that off. And you can leave them long and you can attach things, you can do whatever you want, but I'm trying to keep it really simple because I did say that it was a unisex um, piece. So now I'm gonna take some glue. Now, if you don't like those little cut ends like that, you can always take a Sharpie or something like that and cover those up, but you know I'm not going to um, do that on this video. So now we're gonna take our glue and we really wanna make sure that we glue this up nicely, especially because uh, if men wear this, they tend to be a little harder on bracelets that women are no no offense guys but you know most men wear them when they shouldn't so I want to make sure that I'm getting those ends in there nice and tight and then I want to come in on this one here and then on the end of this one here because this is the one that does all the work so I want to get a little bit on the inside but I want to get it on the outside so just make sure any points that you can see where it could come undone uh, is glued. Now this will dry clear so you won't see it, but this is the most important place right here because we've ended that off. If you've done them up tightly, it shouldn't cause any problems, but we're just going to let that dry and then I'll come back and I'll show you all the completed ones I've got here. Okay, so here's a few of the completed ones that I've got. This is the one that I started at the beginning of the video and I'm just going to tell you the colors because that is something that I know I will get asked for sure. So this one I've used the antique brass components and then I've used the uh, natural light brown and then the natural blue. And I think that combination is so just so pretty. I love that one. I'm just gonna move that up to the side because it's got a lot on it. So now this is another one where I've used the antique pewter. So it's got more of an antique silver kind of a look. And I've used the natural gray and then the natural purple, which is beautiful love that one and then the one that i was wearing is the brighter silver and it's the natural gray and the natural black and then the one that i was working on in this um, uh, finishing project which is with gold and then this one is the antique brown and the um, natural green so i will give you lots of different color choices and i think that you guys are really going to like this one it was so fun to create So to make our bracelet today, I'm starting with about 36 inches of two millimeter leather. I also have about 20 inches of a three ply Irish wax linen. I have four pearls and these have large holes in them. And I'm also going to be using a couple of these tiara cast crimpable ends. I have a toggle and some jump rings. And for tools, I'm going to be using a barrel knot tube. I have a pair of cutters. I have a pair of bent chain nose pliers chain nose pliers and we're going to be using a little bit of GS Hypo cement and a little bit of painter's tape and I'm also going to be using a clipboard. So let's get started. Take my leather and I'm just going to cut it in half so that I have two equal pieces about 18 inches long and this is more than enough leather. Uh, I just always like to work with a little bit more than a little bit less. So the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to take this and put it um, the end in the clipboard and it doesn't matter how much you put in there because again we've got tons of leather. So if you don't have a clipboard you could use one of those little bull nose clips or you could tape this down um, onto your work surface. Whatever works best but I find the clipboard works really well. All right so I'm going to take my Irish wax linen and fold it in half and I want to find the center point. I'm then going to take that center point and place it behind the leather and then I'm going to be making a square knot. Now I want to place this about two to three inches away from the end. If you've got a small wrist, you can get away with two inches. If you have a bigger wrist, you might want to make it just a little bit longer. But you don't want to go too much because you don't want to run out of leather. Okay, so now I'm going to create my first side of the square knot. So I want to bring this tail over to create a bit of a P. And then I'm going to bring this one over top of that. And now this tail has to go underneath and up through that hole. So I'm going to bring that up through there. And I wanna make sure that I keep exactly the same on each side. So before I tighten that up, I'm just going to run my fingers down the end of it 
and make sure that I'm even. And those are exactly even. So you want to make sure that you are even because you don't want to um, run out of your Irish wax linen. So now I'm going to find my point there at about two to three inches and I'm going to tighten that up. Now I'm going to do the left side. So I'm going to do my backwards one or sort of like a Q. Take that tail, go over top. And now I'm going to go underneath and then up through that hole. And that's all we're going to do is create one square knot like that. We're just trying to get this to stay on to the leather. Now I'm going to pull that off of there and I have to do a barrel knot. So let's make sure that's nice and tight. Pull it really tight. And now I'm going to take my barrel knot tube and I'm going to place it just right on top. And now I'm going to sort of work around this whole thing. So what I'm trying to do is encapsulate this Irish wax linen with my leather. So I'm going to take the one that's furthest away from me and go underneath and around. And then I'm going to go one more time and one more final time. And I'm always working towards my left hand. And then I'm going to take that tail and I'm going to come in the back side of it, go in the back of the tube, and then it comes out there. So I'm going to pull that tube out and then I'm going to pull that nice and tight. Now I want to make sure before I tighten it up that I am over top of that little um, square knot that I made. And it's really hard to see with the black because I'm using black and black, but I can tell that it is covered. So now I've got to tighten with that one. And it's sort of a push and pull thing. I want to also tighten with my Irish wax linen. And there we go. So now I have that attached, but you can't see it. It's sort of stuck underneath there, which is exactly what we want. All right, so now what I wanna do is take my beads and place them on my Irish wax linen. So we're gonna be using four beads today, so I'm just gonna place those on there. Now I do find it a little bit easier for demonstration purposes to take a little piece of painter's tape and I'm going to just sort of stick that at the bottom. Next we're going to take this bead and I'm going to push it up as far as I can get it. So the, I want to take my leather and create another square knot. So I'm going to go over top of my Irish wax linen and I'm going to take my left one and then I'm going to go up through that hole. And I'm going to do that nice and tight. So the first one's a little bit you know odd to do until you get used to what you're doing so you can see that that's pushing the pearl up so what i do is i take my fingers and i push that down so that the pearl is in ex exactly where i want it to and then i tighten up on both sides i want to have that really really snug but i don't want that pearl popping up so you kind of have to you know jockey it into position now i'm going to do the second half of my square knot so i'm going to do my q take my tail go over and then I'm going to go up through that hole. And then we're going to make sure that this is nice and snug. So I'll pull that really tight. And the, I find the best way to do it is to put my fingers on top of it and then pull. Otherwise, it tends to pop up. So now we've got our first bead in there. So now I'm going to pull up my next bead. And I'm going to do another square knot. So I've got my P, go over top, and up through the hole. And you want to make sure that you're getting that in there nice and snug. And sometimes it can take a little bit of jockeying. I actually find it easier to do this in my hand than um, on the board like this, but it's really hard for me to show you. So this way is easier to show you. But um, I, I just don't have as much sort of tension. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the um, other side. So I do my Q, so go over top and up through the hole. And make that nice and snug. And you can pull down on the Irish wax linen to make sure that those pearls are in there nice and tight. So I'm pulling on each side. So now you can see that that's really nice and snug in there. All right, I'm gonna do my next one. This bracelet whips up in no time at all. So go over top. And then take that tail and go over top, underneath, and up through the hole. And these pearls aren't exactly round, they're a little bit sort of oblong, so they will sort of pop up a little bit, but um, when you have it on, you'll never notice that at all. All right, I just find the side that I want the best, and then make that nice and tight, and then do my other side. So go over top, take that tail and go over top there, and then up through the hole. And just keep pulling on your Irish wax linen to make sure that that is all staying in there nice and snug. So I'm really kind of tugging on everything. 
And you can see how cute this is looking. And now we're on to our last one. So I've moved up my last one and now I'm going to remove it from my board. And what I do is I tie a succession of knots on the end of the Irish wax linen. And the only reason I'm doing that is I want to create a bit of bulk so that um, it's just I'm making a knot on the end just so that the uh, bead doesn't pop off. So I'm just going to do that, I don't know, five or six times. I just want to create a bulky enough knot so that it won't pop off of there. So you can do as many as you like. There we go. And then I'm going to take a little bit of GS Hypo and I'm just going to put a little dab of glue on there. All right. So now what I want to do is I don't want to trim that off. I want to bring this leather around and I'm going to do another barrel knot just like I did at the beginning. So now we're going to create a barrel knot at the end. So now I'm just going to take the tube and I'm going to place it in between and I'm going to create a knot. So I'm going to take the furthest one away from me and wrap around once twice, three times, working towards my left hand. I'm going to take that tail, push it through, and pull out the tube, and then I'm going to tighten that up. Now you want to make sure when you're tightening it up that you are actually going up as high as, that you, as you can get it so that you're uh, encapsulating that little knot that you made and getting that in there. So what I do is I take my tail of my Irish wax linen and pull on it so that it's in there nice and tight. And then I am going to pull on these knots and get them exactly where I want. And that's what we want. So it's just nice and snug. So I just keep sort of pulling and getting everything nice and tight. Now be careful. You don't want to pull so tight that you break your leather. That is a possibility if you go a little too crazy. But now you can see how um, nicely that is all in there. And you would never even know how those pearls get in there. They look like they're floating, which is what I really like. So now I'm going to separate this leather. And with a nice sharp pair of cutters or um, a pair of scissors, which again, I never have, um, I'm going to trim that off. And then I'm going to take a little bit of glue and I'm going to go right on that knot in there. And we just want to make sure that that knot doesn't go anywhere. So we're just going to put a little bit of glue on there. To measure for a bracelet, what you want to do is you're going to take a measuring tape and you're going to go around your wrist and you want to find what your comfortable size is. So if my wrist measurement is seven and a half inches long, I want to deduct one and a half inches, which is approximately what this um, will all sort of make up at the end. So that means that I need to make this six inches long, but of course I can't just measure like this because then we're going to end up with something offset. So I want to take the middle of this, which is right in the square in the middle of these two, and I'm going to place it right at the three. Now this is only if your measurement is for a seven and a half inch wrist. So you're going to have to do some math. So whatever your comfortable measurement of your wrist is, you want to deduct one and a half inches and that should give you the size that you want. So I'm going to take this middle section and I'm going to place it right on the three and I'm going to go up here to the six and I just sort of measure that with my thumbnails and I'm going to give that a little snip and you can see that we have lots here so we're pretty good. So now I'm going to take this side and I'm going to place it on the three and then I'm going to go back up to the six and then give that a trim. So now you can see if I measure this, I have six inches. And when I add my ends on, that will come up to my seven and a half inches that we need. Now I'm gonna take my ends and I wanna place these on. These uh, little end caps have two different um, patterns on them. So you have to decide which side you want. So I'm gonna use this side as my up part that you can see. So I'm gonna place these on the end and then I'm gonna give them a scrunch. Now, if you didn't like having these um, with a sort of scrunch down look, you could glue them, but I probably wouldn't use GS Hypo. I don't know if it's strong enough. I would probably use like the E6000 or the Super New Glue, something like that, maybe Loctite. So I'm just gonna scrunch these on both sides. You can see I'm not crimping up at the top. I don't wanna squish this part of it. And now I'm gonna to go to the opposite side and I wanna make sure I've got the same pattern going the same direction. You know what though, honestly, if you didn't, nobody would ever notice, but um, I just like to show you the way that it should be done. <laughs> and now I'm gonna turn that over. And these are pretty tight. They're not gonna go anywhere. Now I wanna add my endings. So on one end, I'm gonna use one jump ring. And the way that I'm gonna open that is I'm gonna put the little slit at the top and I want to put my pliers on one side and my bent chain nose pliers on the other and then open in opposite movement. And I'm going to run that through the end 
And then I want to take my toggle and make sure that the hammered part is facing up because that's the part that we're going to see. So then I flip my pliers over and then I'm going to get in here and I'm going to tighten that up nice and tight by just kind of going back and forth and jiggling it until it sort of works its way into the perfect position. And now one of the things you have to make sure when you're doing up your or putting your toggles on is you have to allow for some room um, for movement. If you only put one um, jump ring on and then put your end on, you wouldn't be able to get this inside there. It just, there's just not enough room. So I always add three uh, jump rings on. So that also will give you that flexibility that you need. So now I'm going to just open up three of these jump rings. And so I slipped one in and then I put one inside the other. And then I've got one more here. So now when I put on my final jump ring, I want to make sure that I'm watching the direction that I'm going. So I'm going to pop that one on and then I want to have this going up, just like the other side. We want to have them both going in the same direction and get this done up nice and tight. The last thing that I want to do is I'm going to take a little bit of GS Hypo and I want to put just a little dab right here. And you could put just a little dab right there. Not too much, we don't want to see it really. I just want to make sure that these knots aren't going anywhere and just a little bit there and I'm just going to let that dry and then I'll show you my completed pieces. So there you go. There's our three completed pieces. This one is our antique gray. That is the natural black and this one is the natural antique brown and you'll have your choice also if you decide to buy a kit of the antique silver or the antique bronze. So I love this one. I think it's going to be a classic. And look at how cute that looks. Super, super nice on. It goes with everything and it whips up in no time at all. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from everybody. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please make sure that you do so. I want to thank you so much for watching and we will see you on the next one.